I'm investigative journalist Molly Barrows. For years, I've covered the stories that made headlines in Northwest Florida and all along the Gulf Coast. Murders. Missing persons. And mysteries of all kinds. These cases are far from over for many victims because the full story has yet to surface. Join me for Gulf Coast Confidential, where I dive into the saltier side of the South and expose the lies, greed, and corruption that often weighs down the truth. It's time to turn the tide and get a shot at justice. Hey y'all, I'm Molly and welcome to the Gulf Coast Confidential Podcast where we dive into some pretty scandalous crimes and cases that bubble up right here in Northwest Florida and all over the place. And Pam Hill joins me as she usually does. Pam's a pharmacist and a victim's advocate because she's experienced violent crime in her own family. So Pam, as always, thank you for joining us on this episode. Thank you for having me. This is going to be another one that we are like, uh, it could be me. Absolutely. I know. And I do like that we talk about some of these cases where the average person can potentially relate to right. the circumstances one way or the other. Um, and so this episode's called Deadly Apple River Stabbing. Don't go Pinocchio. What are we talking about? Well, it's about the case of a 54-year-old man in Minnesota. He was convicted recently of basically stabbing one high school student to death um, and injuring four others. They were tubing, which is something we're all familiar yeah. with around here. Um, these kids were basically accused of ganging up on him. He was minding his own business. He was paddling around. He was, you've got more of the details, but yeah. on what he was doing. But right. they started basically harassing him. And it's all on video, mm -hmm. calling him a pedophile or that he was looking for a little girl. And just, mm. there was, what, 13 of them yeah. total? The, the time they all got together, what developed was like a mob mentality or anarchy or the gladiator response. It's, it's this overwhelming teaming up because, you know, that's how prejudice is. We look at something and we say, I don't like it or I like it. And usually because it's different than us, you know, so there's that. But they're out here on the Apple River, sounds so sweet, in Wisconsin. And they called it rafting many, many times. But actually what we call it down here is tubing. Right. Okay? All right. So I brought this little rope right here. I got just a regular piece of rope and a knife. Because not everybody carries a knife with them, but a knife is in this story, and it's a big part of this story. We tie our tubes, inner tubes together so we can all float together as a group. Don't lose somebody. Well, you got your cooler that's attached <laughs> to the tube, well, too. Let's get to the important thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You've got your cooler with your drinks and your beer and your food and your little sandwiches, your stuff in there and stuff. A fun day. It's so fun to tube. So they're doing all this. And, and people party on the river, I've oh, heard. Well, that's what they were doing here. Yeah. The, there was a bunch of guys, six guys. And they were tubing. Well, Nikolai and his wife and some of their friends were tubing ahead of them. And well, Nikolai Mew is the man that was later convicted. Right. He's he's the uh, defendant in in this case. He he. They were tubing, and one of the friends said, "I lost my cell phone." So he went back to go look for it because you know when you go on the river or where we tube even, there's little beaches that form when there's bends where yes. the water's shallow. And that's where you rest or that's where you eat or that's where you play volleyball or whatever. It's a fun day. So Nikolai and them were around the first bend there and the bunch of guys were back here. So he had to go back where the guys were to look for the phone. And Nikolai, he's got on sunglasses. He's got a hat on. He's 52-year-old man. And he's got on some shoes that he mended up with uh, using his pocket knife and stuff because he's just using some old shoes to walk on the river bottom. Yes, okay. which is what a lot of people do. So exactly. this is back in 2022, and mm -hmm. he is from which country? He's Romanian, and he speaks five languages, and he's an engineer. He's very bright. His personality is very stoic and uh, correct. Doesn't show a lot of emotion. Right. And English isn't his first language. Even no. though he can speak mm -hmm. it, there's clearly an accent and, and maybe even a little bit of difficulty expressing right. himself. And cultural changes. Like I imagine, all right, so what happened, he goes back to look for the phone and he's up there looking around. And all of a sudden, these young men start yelling at him, calling him a pedophile. He's, they're like, what are you looking for? Little girls, you know, and on and on and on, calling him a pedo and a raper and stuff. So somehow 
they get close to each other. I think he thought one of the guys over there had the phone he was looking for. Well, and pause right there because I did watch that video. And just to describe even in more detail, like he is minding his own business, Mm -hmm. essentially. These kids jump to conclusion and they range in age from 17 to 24. And these are not small people. Mm -mm. They're healthy, tall, young, strong, strapping young people. Right, right. And, uh, And so if I'm putting myself in his situation... When you've not done anything in your mind, certainly, to bring this on, they also come across like they might have been inebriated to me mm-hmm. or there had maybe some partying going on. They had they had the sound of liquid courage. Right. Exactly. You know, or, or some sort of chemically induced courage. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not, you know, again, people go on the river mm-hmm. to relax and have a good time. Yeah. And I've certainly seen fights on the river. Mm-hmm. I've seen lots of people having fun on the river. But I've also seen it when people argue because they've had some sort of, you know. Right. Being inappropriate or, ex- right. like you said, liquid courage. Or substance-fueled right, argument, right. you well, know. Well, that's, that's exactly what it was. Some beer. You know, everybody has a cooler. Uh, some marijuana. And some of them were drinking hard liquor and stuff. And they admitted that. Actually, uh Several of them had blood alcohol levels that were two and a half times the legal limit. And they sounded that way mm-hmm. when they were yelling at him. Right. And it's seen from you're looking at him in the in the video, like if you're the audience, you're looking at him. So mm-hmm. you're among the, the the crowd, the gang, if right. you will. Yeah. And they kind of start out a little bit farther away from him. He tries to walk away. He tries to they just follow him. Mm-hmm. And then they get closer and closer and closer. And, and again, to your point, stoic face. He's not really responding much. Um, he, he doesn't look scared, but at the same time, he doesn't look like he wants to be there. He mm-hmm. looks like he wants to be away from the situation. Um, but he doesn't, he's not confrontational with him at that point. But they continue and they mm-hmm. keep getting closer. And it's like they feed off of each other's mm-hmm. energy and just egg each other on. Right. And then this girl gets in his face and all but um, basically, I think they hits him uh, or butt chest bumps him, yeah, something, something like that. And he pushes her, and then that's what all they wanted. That was mm-hmm. the the you know it was on the then. spark that right. started that fire because they were like, "Don't you hit a girl?" And yeah. then they were all pushing oh, him. And I mean, I can see why he'd be scared. Mm-hmm. It came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Oh, he was scared. Well, the bunch of six boys, you know, that's six boys or men or young men or uh, football players or high schoolers, whatever you want to say. The fracas was starting, and then this other group of people came, seven of them. So now we have 13 versus one. But this is this is a, a to me, a study in human nature and, and for ourselves. Lord of the flies. Right, exactly. Our, we walk into some situations and we identify with the other young people, say mm-hmm. we're young, or identify with the older person out there, and we automatically take their side. We don't know what's going on. Now, one dad had sent his two sons over there to say, what's going on? Go help that. Every time they talk about him in their pre-stabbing, it's go help that old guy. You know, so it tells you they don't fear him too much. They fear what the anarchy and the mob mentality and the football uh, cheering and all that. Well, the alcohol-fueled right. excitement. Mm-hmm. Right. And they're screaming for the culture. For the culture. I heard that in the video, Mm -hmm. too, and it wasn't until you and I were talking about Mm -hmm. it that I'd ever heard it before. What does that mean? It's sort of like, get this documented so people know this is our event. So we they know it was us before anything else. And it's a very... judgmental, very just mow everybody down mentality. There's a softer version of it called Bay, you know, where we say, hey, Bay, or they're my Bay, B-A-E. And what we're saying is, they were my friend, or they're my bestie, or they're in my life before anyone else. B-A-E. Bay is nice, you know, but this for the culture thing, I mean, that is how you whip people up into a frenzy. You know, when we want to protest something, there has to be some excitement. But they're really going over to him, calling him, I mean, he's a paunchy 52-year-old man. He did not look like a threat. There were mm-hmm. no little kids in the area anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if they really thought that, it's not like he was over there swimming in the kiddie pool. There weren't mm-hmm. any other right. people around. Yeah. You well, know? why would they say like that, I wonder? It makes me wonder about their mindset. Agreed. When you probably think the worst, th- makes me upset, the worst thing you could call a grown man standing out there by himself because mm-hmm. he had waved for his friends to come. They didn't see him. Mm-hmm. And he's down there and he has a pocket knife in his pocket. He had it so he could cut the 
the strings rope and rope that tied their right, tubes together. And tied the tubes together. Because the big thing people are making is like, why does he have a knife on the river? Well, I mean. Well, and it wasn't like he was walking around with a state no. knife. Like, I'm leaning over to right. pick up this knife that Pam brought here. But it's a it's just a, a regular pocket knife. I mean, obviously, it's enough to kill someone. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it wasn't why he brought yeah. it. It's three-inch blade, I think, right about there. And the the first person to get stabbed was the girl. I think her name is Riley. And she was just going off of what they thought they saw out of the corner of their eye. Because when people get on the witness stand, Mm -hmm. all this, he did this, he did that, turns into, um, I think I saw him do this. I saw that too. Mm -hmm. I watched a little bit of testimony and each and every one of them, you know, were asked about what happened. Mm -hmm. And then to, a, you know, one, almost each one, the defending um, attorney was like, is that what you told the mm-hmm. police at the time? No, no, it's not. Right, right. Because he said, she said, they said, and then I just made this up type of thing. And Nikolai is, uh, he's told some lies in this too. Well, that's part of the title of the story, mm-hmm. Don't Go Pinocchio, because right. that's probably what got him convicted. Mm-hmm. Oh, being Pinocchio Joe. And I think, you know, I mean, imagine this. This man is 52. He's had a quadruple bypass. He's had surgeries. Um, he's not the culture he's from. The I don't care if you're a teenager, young person or whatever. You don't get up in the older person's face. And so he's dealing with all that in his head while these drunken teenagers that are fit as they can be. Teenagers and young people, right, young adults. Right. As fit as they can be. And this little little out of out of shape guy as they call him the old man one person yeah, also by himself and so what they had done they had created like a circle, a circle around, around him. him he was in the middle right one and 13 and they all kept creeping closer and closer mm-hmm. like wolves attacking an mm-hmm. animal right he hadn't but so what he does is he gets out of, in some part of this when they when he reaches over and he touches their inner tube. I mean, so what? Somebody touches your inner tube. But like like you said, there's alcohol, marijuana. Uh, they were looking liquor. for a fight, right. it looked like to exactly. me. Exactly. Some interaction. I can be on the river all day long and not tell you who's doing what. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm selfish, but I'm absorbed with my group. Mm-hmm. You know, right. I just don't look. At, I might great glance at what people are doing. That looks fun or it doesn't or whatever. But I mean, too busy staying out of the trees and I get scared of snakes right. and stuff like that. Right. You no, know? I understand. Like, I'm looking for snakes instead of people to fight with. I'm like, ah. Oh. But it, it's just like they were laughing like hyenas, whooping it up, cussing. So he's just... Feels like he's being attacked. He said this was, he he basically was saying, I was afraid for my life. I'm, and he tried to almost say, I'm standing my ground. Mm-hmm. But in that state, there's some sort of obligation or duty to retreat if you can. Interesting. So he stabbed the girl first, and then who was next? Well, I don't know who was next. Uh, it had to be some of the boys there. Well, eventually he stabs uh Isaac, the seventeen-year-old. So it's a total of five people, mm-hmm, right? And uh, and then Isaac, the seventeen-year-old, passed away. Right. He his um, his wounds were fatal, and that what they do all this hooping and hollering when the, when he stabs them because it was fast because they're all together uh, stabs them. You see the water turn. You see the blood in mm. the water, and it goes from this whoop 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 to this ah. These agonal cries, and they're like, "He stabbed him!" and and they're they're yelling his name, Isaac, and each other's name. It's so sad. Nobody has the right to kill anybody. I don't know. I don't care what you know. But the the thing is, now it's a different kind of crying out. Yeah, I heard that in the video too. Yeah. It, it went from you know we're we're gleefully going after this guy, we're we're feeling our oats, if mm-hmm, you will, mm-hmm. to somebody calling ambulance and and and. Who they are as wounded children mm-hmm. comes out. Right. And so you've got, he stabbed one person. They're trying to, the cops are switching off, trying to do CPR on Isaac. And by the way, Isaac was 17. He loved playing golf. He was a little entrepreneurial guy. He, he said he was going to be an engineer also, like Nikolai. And so he had already opened his little detailing business. He detailed boats and cars. Mm-hmm. So he, and he's smart and everybody said he was sweet and good. But when we get caught up, in a mentality with other people, we can't just go jumping in people's face and people don't just need to be stabbing people either. Right. And I think if he hadn't had that pocket knife with him, it might have been a different story. Mm -hmm. But but because he had, uh, and I don't, I'm not saying I judge him for being fearful and grabbing and using mm-hmm. that pocket knife, mm-hmm. but I don't think the intent necessarily was there to go out and bring a knife on the river to kill somebody right. that day. Right. Uh, they, he said he went into basically shock 
and and he's got some uh, post traumatic stress disorder PTSD going on, and so we never do know, we know what that's from. I don't know exactly what that's from, but I remember them mentioning that mm-hmm. that what he was dealing with was his history and what he brings to the and table. He was terrified, right? And he was scared, but he was that kind of guy that's trying not to show it. Yeah, that's definitely the way that it came across. Yeah, but there's no way he could not be scared. I mean, I wasn't there, and I could feel my heart pounding Same. listening to those mm-hmm. young people surround yeah. him and taunt him, and there was no reasoning with them. Anything mm-hmm. he said, they were going to use against right. him. They definitely were after him. Mm-hmm. Like they were, you know, literally there was blood in the water, but proverbially they put it there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It was, it was, they came to the fight. You know, they say, don't go to every fight you're invited to. I mean, each of them came to it. Nobody started out that day going, hey, guess what? I want to get with a group of 13 and be scared for my life. And my friends down the river, you know, around the curve where they can't see me and my wife is too. Mm -hmm. So that's how that's all going. So there's CPR going on with Isaac. So two of the guys get lifted out or by air and then ambulance takes the others and then they have um, Isaac, who's taken to the hospital, and he's uh, dead on arrival. Golly. Well, it's interesting to me that uh, the trial was fascinating mm-hmm. to watch. Oh, yeah. And, and again, you know, the, the kids that were so bold in that video, that's not the testimony that they gave on the stand. Mm-mm. But uh, also, I thought it was interesting that, um, you know, of course, he was claiming self-defense, uh, and but then they caught him in several lies, which I think mm-hmm. undermined mm-hmm. that defense. Oh, yeah. When he, after he stabbed them, he kind of, I mean, he's still, he's still in shock. They are too. Everybody's in shock. So, and a lot of people don't know what went on. And then they see the blood in the water and everybody's scared, not knowing. And then they're, the, to hear, I can't discern which person it is. When I hear one of those boys' voice that I'd heard before going, Isaac, Isaac, and just screaming. It's, I, I can't hardly get that out of my head. It's a real shrill scream. Mm-hmm. It's like, I can't believe this. But Nikolai comes up on the shore there or bank and throws the knife over there. And then he goes on. Here's the part that is, I think he shouldn't have done, but I wasn't there. He gets in, he gets back with his group and they go canoeing for 45 more minutes down toward where you get out. Wow. So he compartmentalized. Yeah. And then he went, and and I think he had an interaction with, it was the police that said something. He said, yeah, some guy got stabbed. And I took the knife away from them. See, all these are not. This is where he went, Pinocchio Joe. Mm-hmm. Okay, if he, but he, could, I don't think he could discern what was happening there. And the fact that he paddled off and canoed off is rather callous and not taking responsibility. Absolutely. And then lying about. See, he said he wrestled the knife away from one of the boys or young men. Mm-hmm. So that's where that went wrong. Yeah, absolutely. If he just been honest and yeah. said, yes, this scared me. I was involved, mm-hmm. stuck around, mm-hmm. took ownership of the situation and his role in it. Absolutely. I think because it's not a whole lot different from that pow, pow, popcorn murder mm. is the name of another episode that we did talking about the retired police officer in Tampa who shot and killed the young father in the movie theater because he was texting his babysitter. Yeah. And, uh, that old man just didn't like it. He, he didn't like he it. He didn't like it that no. that young man didn't mm-hmm. do what he said. Right. And he Stop said, texting. He, he was sitting, I'm going to shoot you. Exactly. He's sitting flat on his hiney in a movie theater and he brought his gun to the movies. I don't sure. Know how many people, yeah. Yeah, do you do that? Like a regular. <laughs> sh- oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Me and Clint Eastwood. Right. He'd bring a gun to the movie. <laughs> but then the guy, like you said, doing just something. Even, I don't care if he was on his phone talking. Mm-hmm. You're not the. Uh, president of everybody in the world's right. behavior. You know, we all. If but you, then a jury found him not guilty mm-hmm. of killing that guy, mm-hmm. or basically the charge that he was mm-hmm. facing, and and let him off, and mm-hmm. he was able to attend his daughter's wedding, and still feels like he was not just exonerated by the law, but felt like he was right the whole time. Yeah. Well, he played the I was stand stand your ground. Right. I was scared. That was, and he's the one that started the argument, mm-hmm. and he's the one that brought. A gun to a movie, mm-hmm. you know? Well, I picture living in his house like, I'm the dad and I said so and nothing else gets discussed and it's this way or else there's severe consequences. I'm not familiar with that kind of home, but I see people. Authority figure in, in his job mm-hmm. and authority figure in his personal mm-hmm. life. So whatever I tell you other grown man, you do it. We're You and I are working on a case right now called with the Uber driver that accidentally stumbled into uh, some sort of scheme where the man's 80 years old, comes out of the house and follows her around 
and shoots her dead in his own driveway and calls 911 and acts like it's her fault. Yeah, because he was scared. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so in this case, it's um, the details are much more in favor of Mew. Mm -hmm. I mean, 13 against one, uh, unprovoked, if he had just done nothing and tried his best to get away. Right. And, and as sad as it is, like, it wouldn't surprise me if those kids didn't get to the point where they were beating up and attacking him. God forbid. Yeah. I mean, we don't know what would have mm -hmm. happened because it didn't right. get to that point. But we could be sitting here talking about how they got a little out of control and ended up accidentally or unintentionally drowning mm -hmm. him yeah. or beating up on him and he could have drowned. Um, but that's not what we're talking about mm -hmm. because he had a knife and because mm -hmm. he did what he did. Right. Because he lied and walked away. Exactly. At some point, their advances had pushed him down on his back. Yeah. So I think about this, even if you're just on the ground and you're on your back and there's 13 people against you, but there's another component to this. When you're in water, and there's a possibility that you could drown or they mm -hmm. could hold you under. This man was so fearful, he got diarrhea during this episode. Wow. So what does that tell you? His whole body did like that. Now, after he stabbed some of these— He literally pooped himself. He did. During he the did. incident. Yes, he wow. did. Yep. And so during that incident, too, when he stabs these young people, um, two of them had their intestines— in their hands. Wow. So he knew how to use a knife. I think he was desperate. I think he just wailed and cut and moved around, like, probably wildly, it seems like, because five people, it had to happen so quickly. Well, and if you're coming at it from basically hip level, mm -hmm. you're going to get somebody right. in it the It was abdomen. all in the midsections. Right. And I, I, I imagine, I'm not an expert, that it was like this underhanded, just yes, kind of sneaky right. little coming thing. Up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, all of them had their wounds in the mid torso and the to hear somebody say they're 20 years old and they're like basically disemboweled me good lord i That's mean seriously a nightmare. and imagine seeing that and i mean like i said he has no right to do this absolutely they had no right to provoke him but they didn't kill somebody and they didn't disembowel somebody mm -hmm. and they didn't stab somebody these they're, the scars, they showed the scars on TV. That's why I said this case is so sad. It is sad. And then he was convicted. Mm -hmm. And like I was saying earlier, I felt like he actually had a stronger case. But for the violence and the and the lying and, right. the, and the continuing to tube. Right, right. You know, how many times do you disembowel people and then tube on? <laughs> right, right. Or even you have an altercation with somebody, you know. most What we've got to learn to do is de-escalate mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and learn how to deal with conflict and maybe look over there and go, okay, there's some drunk teenagers. I'll come back later. You know, sometimes you have to ease on out of the situation. You know, you can be right all alone in Wrightsville. And then now he, he might think he's right. He is basically facing 97 years in prison. Yeah, that's right. Because he was, uh, he was convicted of first degree reckless homicide, four counts of first degree recklessly endangering safety, and one count of battery. And I mm -hmm. believe he's going to be sentenced July thirty first. Uh, it's a it, it's a sad case, and right. I, I saw where you know the the parents of. Isaac, the one that passed, were thankful that he had been found guilty, mm -hmm. and they were mm -hmm. happy that he was being sent to prison, right. whatever the sentence was going to be, because they feel like they've been suffering these last mm -hmm. two years and justice hasn't mm -hmm. been served. And uh, and then I think about the wife of that young father who was shot and killed in the Tampa movie theater mm -hmm. and how she feels like justice hasn't been served. Right. So, you know, I, I it is. It's sad all the way around that this incident impacted so many lives when people were just out to have a fun day on the river. Mm -hmm. You never would expect it. And sort of, I was watching the polls about is he guilty or not guilty, the general public, basically 75 to 80 percent said he's not guilty. Mm. But we have to look at that and go, are these people that are over 40 years old? You know, and that's what's important about jury duty, too. If we don't have all different kind of people. A on jury, jury of your peers. Right. Because what if everybody's above 40, you know, and they're all teenagers, you know, they're sympathetic to the, the old man feeling scared. But I, I just think that if they all would have been honest, which is, you know, I, I would hope that would be people's default. But he um, he went Pinocchio Joe. Yeah, he did go Pinocchio Joe. And, and I heard that his defense attorney was basically saying, you know, we felt like we had a good defense, uh, that we had we had made our point. Um, but basically to to what you were saying about the importance of having a, juror, a jury of your peers and people from different walks of mm -hmm. life. He basically said, uh, in many ways, quote, self-defense is a community standard. And it's very dependent on which 12 people within the community that mm -hmm. you ask. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also broke it down a little bit. The prosecutor, Carl Anderson, um, 
according to the CBS News article that I'm reading about it, he said that the jury essentially he felt like they couldn't agree on intentional. They agreed unanimously that it was reckless that he showed utter disregard for human life. And that's where the continuing to tube on, I'm sure, probably mm-hmm. played a part. Hiding and lying about the knife and wrestling it away from one of the boys. If he had just been honest, I think people could have related to that and that fear and, and not necessarily blamed him for it escalating to that part, you know, or to that point. Mm-hmm. But b- because he did try to cover for himself and lie. And I imagine the kids did downplay their role in mm-hmm. all that, but there was mm-hmm. video of it. Oh, yeah. And that video was disturbing. And you wonder, it playing the video, does it help the prosecution or the defense? And I was looking at it going, every time I looked at it, I got scareder and scareder. Well, and that for the culture, when they're shouting mm-hmm. out for the culture, and especially, again, he's an older man. He wouldn't necessarily be hip to what that means. Right. But certainly their whole tone, the way they were coming at him, it didn't sound good. Mm-hmm. And if you don't understand that sort of a, a cry, mm-hmm. then it could come across like, well, my God, I have no idea what these people are about to do right. next. What does that even mean? Right. Is it, am I about to be on some, you know, live video feed of being killed mm-hmm. in the river? Like, what does that mean for the right. culture? Right. And he's it's not his culture over here. Right. And so even you saw that even during the uh, testimony and stuff, they would have to have translators for some of the people that were witnesses. And so I look at that, too, and go, you know, some things get lost in translation. And I, I think that with with his culture and him not knowing what they're yelling, I could I couldn't discern it at first what they were saying. But then they I mean it's loud. It's kind of scary, and I'm like, why are you saying that? They just don't sound reasonable, yeah. and I think that would strike the fear. Aside from the yelling, the getting closer, the physical contact that they initiate, mm-hmm. it is just this mob mentality, and it's unpredictable. And if I were in his place, I would have been scared too. Yeah, I've been scared. I don't know that I would have. No, I don't carry pocket knives. I I wouldn't have done that. I would have just walked away, I think. You know, it would have been because they dehumanized him by just yelling Mm -hmm. and calling. uh, I'm not a man. It was. It was bullying. And then they got more than they bargained for. Yeah. I don't understand. Men have a certain way of, you know, ego and this, that Mm -hmm. and the other. And that's not wrong or bad. But I imagine it was a testosterone battle. And I imagine that, you know, calling someone a raper and looking for little girls is about with not knowing them and not touching them, is about as low as you can go. Absolutely. Any uh, takeaways that you want to share on this case? I, I think when we're in a situation like that, we it's okay to walk away. Just walk away. You don't have to prove yourself. Right. And you're alive. I mean, look how many people. Uh, Nikolai's wife was inconsolable when she heard the verdict. His whole family's affected. Every one of the people that were there on the river, their families, the people, they have permanent injuries. Nothing good happened out of this. I know. In some ways, it reminds me of road rage incidents. Yeah. Where someone out of nowhere just gets angry at something that somebody did, either intentionally or unintentionally on the road. The Mm -hmm. next thing you know, a gun's been pulled or an accident's been caused that has tragic consequences. And nobody set out to do that that day, but that's what happened because... Like you said, conflict resolution mm-hmm. and maybe are some dying skills. Right, right. And we, we need more of that. And, well, just walk away. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much, Pam. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us. That's it for Deadly Apple River Stabbing. Don't go Pinocchio. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Gulf Coast Confidential. I'm your host, writer and producer, Molly Barrows, with co-host and researcher Pam Hill. And a big thank you, as always, to our director, editor, production engineer, all-around fabulous human being, James Roy. (laughs) And remember, you can listen to more of our Gulf Coast Confidentials wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And you can also watch on the YouTube channel. We hope you are. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribe is free. (laughs) We'll see you next time.